begin the uh, special Board of Public Works meeting on Monday, February 24th. So moved. Okay. Second. So we are joined together today. Is there any public comments? Since there's nobody for the public, I guess we're okay on that. <coughs> We only have one item on the agenda, the proposed amendments to the draft stormwater and flood control ordinance. So, Jim, do you want to explain? I do. And, and we all have some, um, we have the, what came to us in the email on the um, amendments. And then we have some other pieces of paper here as well. So there were, there were two amendments. There was, uh, as of Friday, there was one proposed amendment um, that was proposed by Councilor uh, Jesse Adams, which was the one that I emailed to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I made a hard copy and, and left that there too, in case you didn't bring it with you. And then this afternoon, um, there was a further amendment uh, proposed by Councilor Adams, which is on, it's a copy of an email with this black circle on it and there's some language on the reverse side. So uh, so two amendments proposed by Councilor Adams. Um, the purpose of the meeting was to discuss um, and make the board aware of these proposed amendments to the stormwater and flood control utility ordinance to give the board the, um, to give them the ability to comment um, on these proposals. The ordinance committee is meeting tomorrow night at 6.30. So thus the meeting, the reason for the meeting tonight. So that if the board has comments, we can bring those forward to the ordinance committee tomorrow. So I think what I'd like to do is um, just go through one at a time and, and have a discussion about what uh, what the changes are and, and have a discussion about those and see um, how the board feels about them one way or another. So I think what I'd, I'd like to do is start with the one that I emailed on Friday which is this one, looks like this. Um, draft the language excluding general fund budget only from ordinance is the title of the document that Council Adams distributed. Um, so if you've, if you've read it, um, this would basically be inserted um, in the section of the ordinance, which I think is section 280-8, defined as purpose of the fund. And this letter M reads, in no case shall the general fund budget receive budget relief from the revenue derived from the stormwater fee. For avoidance of doubt, items such as one, payments in lieu of taxes, pilots, and two, general fund administrative costs that cannot directly or exclusively assign to one fund allocations or operating transfers shall not be paid from this enterprise fund. The single exception will be for the cost of employee benefits associated with the direct salary cost of DPW personnel paid from the stormwater budget as such benefits are currently budgeted in the general fund. So the, uh, there really wasn't the statement uh, of purpose that came out with the language, uh, but I think what I can say is that uh, Council Adams was working with some representatives of the Chamber of Commerce um, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce um, wanted uh, basically some amendment to the language that would restrict what they've been, what they've called budget relief, which is basically some allocation of funds from this proposed enterprise fund into the general fund, and they've proposed the means to do it by restricting um, the use of a payment in lieu of taxes and restricting um, the use of indirect allocations for. Um, uh, what they're calling general fund administrative cost. So I don't have an opinion on this. I feel like I'm in a little bit of an awkward position, honestly, about whether it's a good idea or not to have this language in there. Um, the operation of an enterprise fund, the city is allowed to run uh, enterprise funds and set them up in accordance with Mass General Law. Um, the uh, Department of Revenue has uh, guidance on enterprise funds and how they get set up, what are uh, allowable costs and allocatable costs from an enterprise fund, if you can use a pilot, what indirect cost schedules are, um, what policies the city needs to have to run an enterprise fund. Um, to my knowledge, 
city runs the current enterprise funds in accordance with the general laws and the guidance this year. Um, I think it's the opinion of the chamber that um, they wanted something a little more restrictive in the ordinance. In other words, I don't think the chamber is suggesting that the city is not um, running its business in accordance with general law, but they feel like a tighter restriction, tighter and more restrictive language in the ordinance um, would be would be more suitable in this case. For example, um, no pilots. So the question of general fund administrative cost, if you look at how the city develops indirect, indirect cost allocations for general funds, um, and you may recall this from, from budget discussions in the past, there's an allocation of a percentage of uh, uh, salary time for people that work at City Hall, the auditor, the collector, um, the mayor, uh, human resources, you know, these, these sorts of people, a small percentage of their budget is allocated uh, through indirect costs and ends up being paid for by the enterprise funds. So if you look at um, how an enterprise fund is run, the mayor reviews and signs the contracts, human resources helps hire the people, um, the auditor reviews the contracts, the collector helps collect the bills. So I think um, from that standpoint, some of the costs that are allocated through indirect costs to um, people that work at City Hall are, in my opinion, they're justifiable cost. So the question is, um, you know, how much how much of a restriction do you need on the assignment of indirect costs, and is this more restrictive language, uh, as Councilor Adams has proposed, um, you know, is it something that that makes sense to include? Um, so I guess there can be a discussion. But I'll, I'll add one more thing before I stop. You know, um, with the at the last board meeting, we discussed um, several proposals that were made previously by Councilor Adams and Councilor O'Donnell. We didn't have an opinion about every one of those. Some of them we just had no opinion about, feeling that they were more political political decisions or things not directly really in the purview of public works, and we didn't comment on those. Some of them we did. We had some uh, some comments about um, things that we felt um, either that needed to be revised a little bit, and we had also had other comments about changing the proposal ourselves. But there were some that we didn't have any comment on. So as far as uh, considering this, I think the board, the three options would be you can endorse the type of change that's um, being proposed here or you could not endorse it, or you could have no opinion about it, really. Um, and it's entirely up to you in terms of how uh, how you want to proceed. Um, the chamber feels strongly about it, Jesse Adams, the council feels strongly about the language, which is why it's proposed. Um, and the mayor uh, you know, has stated that the enterprise funds are in, in accordance with general law in auditing and Department of Revenue requirements. So it feels that there's no specific need to have more restriction on the fund than any of the other funds. So Dave has a question for him, Chris, but I just want to ask a question of clarification first. Is the draft language for excluding general fund budget relief as proposed in that first email on Friday, is that in accordance with the Department of Revenue or is it more restrictive? It's more restrictive. Okay. So this particular one that's proposed by the um, chamber and by um, Jesse Owen is um, Jesse, Jesse, Adams. Jesse Adams is um, uh, more conservative. Okay, David. This this strikes me as being fairly in, inconsequential. Is that a reasonable assessment? The, the amount of money involved. I don't know how much money would be involved. Well, I guess nobody does. Um, and I guess, I don't know what inconsequential, what's the value of inconsequential? Whether it has any consequences in the operation of the utility. Is, is it enough money, one way or the other, to, to have an effect, a significant marginally significant. I mean, it could be 
I mean, we had one, we've presented some information publicly that uh, we had we had made a rough, a rough estimate on what the indirect charges might be for such an enterprise fund, and I think the number was a couple hundred thousand. So, and that was based on sort of a comparison between indirects for the utilities. This was an, an estimate we had made a couple of years ago, but I think it might get you on the ballpark of what it might, what it could conceivably be in, ter in, ter in terms of order magnitude. Um, Chris and then... Why well, have I... I have oh, a, David, were you finished? Just, uh, it would seem to me that the state is going to prevail in the end if there is any conflict, whether this is correct or half correct. That, that the state language is going to govern if there is an issue. Well, I think that this is more restrictive than the state, and I think it... Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that it's the... It's the city, the city councilors would have the ability to approve this, and I'm not a lawyer, but I think it would be legal because it's not broadening what the state allows you to do. It's narrowing. It's narrowing it down, mm -hmm. which I think is a reasonable, uh, which would be a reasonable thing to do if the city council is willing to do so. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris. So I have a procedural question and then a comment. Um, Procedural question is, uh, I'm not entirely clear what it is uh, we're being asked to, to present tonight. Um, if, if any of the language that we find to be, and Jim alluded to sort of the three options, uh, to be something we wanted to endorse or something we wanted to edit, uh, I'm not sure what it is that we're, asked, we're being asked to present to the council for tomorrow night. So <coughs> at some point I'd like to have a discussion about that. Um, and maybe we should do that before I, my comment. Uh, it's really, you can choose to do whatever you. Okay, you, as I understand it, I'm, I'm just doing this for the sake of argument, I could have it all along. Um, the draft language presented and supported by, presented by Jesse um, Adams and supported by the, by the um, Chamber of Commerce has a more conservative um, perspective. I, un I understand that part of it, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to interrupt, I'm just, uh, what I'm asking from a procedural standpoint is, what is the City Council asking from us? Not, you know, an interpretation of what they're, what, what, what's trying to happen here, because I have very different opinions about that. But I'm just asking, how is it that we, uh, assuming for a moment that we have an opinion, mm -hmm. how is that to be conveyed to them? It, What's it going to look like? Sure. So the the original language for the ordinance came out of the board. So uh, edits to it, proposed changes. Council wants to know what the board thinks about that since they proposed the original legislation um, as they had requested that they do. So they're proposing a change. The council is proposing a change, um, and they they're asking for the board's input on it, whether it's, we think it's the greatest idea ever, um, geez, we don't think it's uh, a good idea, or simply we don't really have an opinion about the idea, it's a legal decision um, or a policy decision that the city council will need to make as they grapple with the contents of the ordinance. We would propose, Ned and I and, and Doug, and I think Terry will be back tomorrow, will be in front of the, or at the City Council Ordinance Committee tomorrow, comments that are made tonight, whether it's a vote or not a vote, or uh, anything or nothing, or whatever it is that transpires tonight, we would bring that forward to the Council, mm -hmm. whether it's something as specific as modifications to this language by word, or whether it's any of the things I just said. So it's really at your, at your discretion what you want the message to be mm -hmm. um, tomorrow. All right. Then my comment would be, and I don't, I don't, in any way, shape, or form, want to put words in the mouths of, of anybody else. But if I was to draft language like this, mm -hmm. I would be doing so to avoid creating um, what is effectively a slush fund, where we could siphon off money from a new revenue source into general operations of the city or some other endeavor. Mm -hmm rather than dedicating it solely to stormwater and, 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 um, and uh, 
and, 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 and uh, drainage. Um, having said that, um, my feeling is that um, all of our enterprises funds ought to operate under the same set of rules. Mm -hmm. And particularly if they're in compliance with state statute. Mm -hmm. And that to carve out a difference different one for this particular ordinance, for this, this particular ordinance and this particular enterprise fund um, really just sort of complicates the situation. And, and, and um, to my mind, I if it was me again, it would be a, a political initiative rather than a functional initiative. And uh, I'm, I, I would be disinclined to support this. Okay. That was my point exactly. Is this any different than the way we charge indirects on our existing enterprise funds that are operated in accordance with Mass Department of Revenue regulations on enterprise funds and it seems absurd to set a different way of calculating the indirect on this one because it just, and quite honestly, it sort of undermines what indirect really is and how appropriate it is and could undermine what we're doing on our water and our sewer and our solid waste by saying, okay, we'll allow this exception here because I think indirect is an important source of revenue for the uh, corner office to have to support their operations that's fairly balanced across different operations in the city. Mm -hmm. So I would take exception to this. Okay. Um, Anything well, I think the <coughs> payment in lieu of taxes would be the one that sort of jumps out at me, um, knowing that we pay taxes on um, the, the wastewater treatment plant property. Um, are we going to start paying taxes on the flood control system? I don't know. Do I, don't know that, I don't know how that would work, but it's a lot of land. It's got to add up to probably more acreage than the, um, the existing wastewater treatment plant. I don't know if the, if the flood control uh, structure is part of that payment in lieu of taxes already. I don't know. So it's greatly depreciated because it's deteriorated. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully it still works. Um, and I don't know, do we pay, we must pay something to Waitley, I know we've argued about that, or we've had Windsor. conversations with Waitley about uh, the water treatment plan. We had that with Williamsburg. Williamsburg, I'm sorry. And we ended up negotiating because uh, there was an exemption in the law that we didn't have to pay taxes in the buildings on those properties. And so we negotiated a pilot of, I think, $8,000 a year to help support fire and police services in Williamsburg. Right. So, I mean, I, I, I can't say that I am against this. I, I, um, I, I, what would make me nervous is that, that well, certainly indirect expenses are part of doing business. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be staff time and that. And so you know, where that, how much the indirect expenses might be beyond the DPW, I don't really know. But it certainly wouldn't be a big number, I wouldn't think. So sort of, um, I guess I'm agreeing with what David was trying to say. Is that it seems like the, the, those could be inconsequential, but the pilot I think could be consequential potentially. So I'm not. I'm kind of neutral. I think the counselors are trying to do the right thing. That's what I read. Do you have an opinion from staff? An opinion on this? Yeah, whether or not the indirect or would. I mean, is there a large difference between what they're suggesting in terms of what we charge for indirect? Well, the, the indirects are, uh, I think that ju they're justifiable in my opinion mm -hmm. um, on some level because there are, we deal with people at City Hall on many matters related to the function of the enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. So. And they're talking about excluding those, that part of the indirect in this language, yes? That's correct. Yeah. Which is inconsistent with our other enterprise funds. That is correct. Okay. Um, I and again, I now have a procedural question. Does this? You said that there were two amendments. Does the second amendment relate to this at all? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Just want to be clear. No. Okay. So we have on the table um, draft language that has been proposed for excluding general fund budget relief from the ordinance. A 
yes vote in support of this would be that um, uh, you would be in support of this particular item and that a, a no vote would say that all enterprise funds should operate the same that it's in um, that are that the uh, ways that our current enterprise funds operate within the Department of Revenue guidelines, we would be consistent with that, and that we would be allowing the city council, if they want to make a legal or a political decision, that would be their decision, but it's, it's something that we're inclined to not do. So, are there any distinctions? Uh, I just have one more question. And that was, in our budget process, I think, we said that there's a two million dollar cap on this every year for the first five years, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the most that we'll be raising with stormwater utility fees is two million. Mm -hmm. the, the second thing is is that the process for our enterprise budget, enterprise fund budgets those get submitted. And we 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 develop them and then they get submitted. We do. The difference between this one is that the city council will be approving the budget rather than well, the city council approves the enterprise fund budgets, but they have not historically had a lot of input into water, sewer, solid waste. Mm -hmm. This one they changed around a bit that they are the sole approvers of the budgets. So this is sort of a redundant opportunity. Well, they have the opportunity to review and send it back to us if they, they think we're charging too much indirect or indirect that's out of line or a pilot that we're suggesting that is in our budget that they're not supportive of. Right. They so they have a further review of our budget. This budget, yes. And that's regardless of what we vote here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. David? I think our primary objective is to see the ordinance pass and that this item isn't worth thinking around with. And don't, it isn't worth arguing with the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, this isn't mainstream, it's far to the periphery. Did you have yeah, I, I don't see it that way at all. And in fact, um, if, if it'll help things move along, I, I'd be willing to offer a motion. I'm not sure, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I'm not sure what, what it is that they want out of us, but mm -hmm. um, I, would, I, would, I would move um, that uh, the, the Board of Public Works um, uh, recommend that we that the city council not adopt this language, and that, um, uh, that any new stormwater um, enterprise fund uh, be operated uh, as the city operates the existing enterprise funds in compliance with Massachusetts statute, okay, we have without additional restriction. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? Shall I second that? Oh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> great, MJ. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, all right. Uh, so any more discussion? All those in favor of Chris's motion? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Opposed. Okay, so we have three in favor and one opposed. So uh, do we need to have, so we motion have four? Carries. Motion carries. Motion carries, yeah. Okay. Right. Doing other than a good point. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you, but it's but you know we we said let's let's run things the way we always run them, standard operating procedures. If the city council decides that politically they need to do this, then fine. I'd live with it, but I want us to put our foot down. Just that, you know, there's no reason for the exception. We don't see a reason mm -hmm. for the exception except to get it passed. That's a political decision and not a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so staff wants to come on a second proposal. So the second proposal which came out uh, this afternoon, if you look at uh, this, the back of this uh, sheet is the language. Um, uh, Wayne Flyden, who's the director of the Office of Planning and Sustainability, um, had been discussing this amendment with Councilor Adams. And in the amendment, is what is in bold here on the, on the sheet that you're looking at. So under s section 280-6 of the rates, 
Um, the current language says bills for large residential property and non-residential property shall be determined based on the estimated area of impervious and pervious surface on the property. The proposed additional language is property owners who own multiple undeveloped parcels with protected status, protected for open space by fee or less than fee ownership by methods including but not limited to um, Article 97, Mass Constitution 97th Article of Amendment, Mass General Law 8C, uh, Chapter 44B, Chapter 45, Chapter 61, 61A, 61B, or Chapter 184 are held by a nonprofit land trust shall be assessed as if their multiple parcels were all part of a single larger parcel. So, um, a little background on this. Um, it came to our attention as, uh, as we moved forward through the process of looking at bills and um, how the utility would work that uh, in actually one of the board meetings John O'Masta, a resident in town, is also a farmer, came in and asked the board a question about what if you own several undeveloped pieces of land that are, uh, that are contiguous. We could get one stormwater bill for each parcel. And we had discussed this internally, and we had also discussed it with the credit committee, I believe, this rings a bell. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, this is. That there was going to be a credit, uh, and there's a credit um, section from the credit manual that uh, it's a credit that would be applicable to multiple undeveloped properties that are adjacent and have the same owner. For this credit, adjacent means properties that are contiguous or are directly across a right of way from each other. These properties will, con will be combined into one property for billing purposes. So the purpose of the credit was to deal with this issue of uh, one ownership for many parcels. In a way, this language is a subset of of what was defined, what we were going to define in the credit, the, the, the combining of parcels. Mm -hmm. um, this is a subset of it because it's only related to protected land. Mm -hmm. um, this would be part of the ordinance, which obviously makes it more permanent than language in a credit policy that will ultimately be approved by the board mm -hmm. um, or modified in the future by the board or the city council. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't particularly have an opinion about this. I think um, the concern about um, multiple parcels was going to be dealt with in in the credit manual. Having this type of language for for protected land in the ordinance seems like a reasonable thing to me, in my opinion. Um, I'm not opposed to it. Um, the same thing would be accomplished by the manual. So. I just happened to read the credit one this afternoon, so when I'm reading this, it's like, oh, big job. Right. Right. I make a motion that we uh, suggest um, approval or inclusion of this new language as it relates to the section 280-6 rates. Are there any seconds? Second. Okay. Motion? Well, it's on the table by MJ to approve this. Is there any discussion about this? Um, it does seem like the difference is just uh, contiguous versus multiple parcels, and I, I don't know how many multiple parcels there might be, even, you know, uh, I forget what we're, what the fee rate, we're already talking about just a, a single fee as if the parcel, whatever size it would be, would be one acre, no more than that. So it doesn't seem like there's a lot of money involved in this, and it certainly seems like um, it's what we, we want to increase the amount of protected land we have. I would say that it's probably a nominal amount of money. Not That's much. what I would imagine mm -hmm. also. It's good to hear you say that. That's what I was looking to hear you say. <laughs> you agree? But can I just clarify? You use the word contiguous, contiguous but I don't see any. It isn't. No, it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's what point. the difference yeah. is that the word contiguous was in the original <coughs> ordinance, I think. Um, Contiguous is in the credit manual, and we would continue. We would continue with that language, right. um, because common, you know, one person that owns 50 lots of property undeveloped right. all around town. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the intention of the task force that that person 
get a bill for all those properties. Right. I think what we were trying to avoid is land that is contiguous. If someone were to pay a survey and to combine those properties into one lot, they could effectively do away with the multiple bills. Mm -hmm. So rather than, I mean, it sort of meets the, in, I think it meets the intent of what the task force was going for. Mm -hmm. If the properties are contiguous and have one owner, mm -hmm. then they would get one bill. Um, this is a little bit different because you could own, if you have, if you have five pieces of protected land across the city that aren't contiguous, you would only get one bill. And theoretically, that would mean you're also, if it's protected, you're probably not going to develop it. So it, it would actually be a net benefit <coughs> to the watershed in general to, to leave it as an undeveloped parcel. Right, and I think that so would it encourages that. Right. It seems to me. Right, and I think that would be Wayne really Biden's opinion as well. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? The motion carries. Make a motion, will you adjourn? Second. Oh. Is there anything else we need to take up? Not until Wednesday. Cool.